Welcome to Youth Files. Youth Files, we had the ability through this pandemic that we're still in to produce content regularly. Almost on a weekly basis is an episode that has been put out. Could you believe that? God is good, you know. And amazingly, um, I thank God for the connections. I thank God for the divine connections with the youths from around the world that I've had the privilege to interview so far. And I know there are many more that are going to come. Uh, yeah, I need to learn. I need to learn. Let's start with Spanish. Let's start with Spanish. Let's start with the basic one. Let's we'll start with Spanish. Um, and then we will <laughs> we'll go from there. Right? So. Uh, for, yeah, I want to French and I want to French. Don't worry, don't worry. That, that, that will happen. Supernatural. God will just say, okay, what's that tongues? It, it's possible, you know. It's possible. Yeah. You just put it in hand, we can actually learn the language. <laughs> so, guys, so uh, the title for today, for this, this meeting, this hour, this 56 minutes of God speaking is a, a very uh, catchy and very, you know, 2020 kind of title. I surprised myself with that title. Are we leaving Jesus on scene? Is the title. And I would have sent out that flyer, that poster. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, because I, I believe people, you know, they just. You know, you're on WhatsApp, you have the ability to download images or not. And some of us, because we lost space on our phone, we were even worried to download the image, so you didn't even know what I sent you. So here it is. I will leave Jesus on scene. What does that even mean? Right, for the not so young generation who are viewing us, it basically means when you get a message from somebody, that you don't respond. And, and the thing about it is, is that you see the message and you still don't respond. Some of some, and here's the thing about it, WhatsApp so know the minds of people that you do, you're hiding your blue ticks and all. Because you have those people who, they're so bold. They have their blue ticks on, so you can see they read the message. But they still don't respond. And they have those who kind of, they kind of feel, they, they kind of feel bad. So they don't have one day to take. So yeah. But you know when you have that person, so that message. Because they now post a status on Instagram, they now post a, a you know, so you know the person online that view your message. But anyway, see, that's the thing about it is that's what's happening in, in the natural. That's how we view things in the natural. But, you see, the thing about it is that how does this apply to the Church of Jesus Christ? How does it apply to our kingdom work? How does it apply to spiritual things, is the question. It's always a question because, you know, you're not just choosing a catchy title because, oh, this is a catchy title, oh, therefore this clickbait, people will then want to come and view and want to see, oh, what exactly is he talking about? What exactly am I talking about? That's a question. And I need to figure that out before anybody else. Do you think so? Because I was kind of tossing to a fro what we should actually discuss. I, I'm normally, well, it kind of differs, but, but how, I, how I would get a message is that I would go in the Bible, uh, I would go in the Bible, but I would go on the Bible. <laughs> Close my eyes and be like, okay, Holy Spirit, what to bring? Just give me one scripture. And then I would take that scripture and then, uh, you know, a, a word will unfold from that. Another way it will happen is, you know, I would get some divine inspiration, some event would have happened, and let's say something simple as an analogy of using an ink blotted pen. You know, there's so many spiritual things you could get out of that. And that's how the Holy Spirit works, you know? However, he uses whatever tool to try to convey to us a message that 
is relatable to us. And I hope that this message will be relatable to us. Because in fact, I already know that it's relatable to us by the title alone. Are we being left unseen? Has that happened to you before? Yeah. Has that happened to you before? Because you see, in this age of technology, we are accustomed to getting instant messages. This is a phenomenon that has happened for, let's say, 20 years, probably a little more, 25 years, for the most, there have been that form of instant messaging. However long the internet has been around, you know, they started with, uh, was it that MSN? Before MSN, they had something dial up yeah. messaging, and then there was the early forms of um, BBM and that iMessenger, and then after BBM, we had, you know, we saw message on Facebook, <laughs> yeah. we saw message on yeah. Facebook, yeah. and yeah. then, yeah. boy. <laughs> and even back then, we used to get left on scene. We just didn't know it back then. But now it's so evident that we, we send messages to people and they're just so wicked. They hurt your heart. They're like, why do we not respond? That's the question. Why do we not respond? It's so easy to communicate. In this world we live in, technology has made it easy for us to communicate between one another. We don't have to physically be here and change. I don't have to speak to you face to face. You could just go on that live and watch, right? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, let me not tell <laughs> I am <laughs> pointing at the elbows or want to throw no stool from up because I might get to a box so anyway. But guess what? They, there's an increase in the technology to communicate, the channels of communication, but there is a reduction in the ability to actually communicate to a person. Mm -hmm. For us, as human beings, it is now difficult for us to have personal conversations, physical conversations with somebody. We find awkward, we find ourselves awkward, we find ourselves not able to formulate words. And we even see it in our messaging vocabulary. Yeah, yeah. We use a U instead of Y O U, B R B L O L F Y I, S M H, and then the ones with the letters in between that we're not supposed to use, right? Our language has changed. But the thing about it is. Is that helping us? Because that's why we make everything so shorter, shorter, shorter. To, as you said, Ariel, we don't even use letters and words anymore. We use emojis to describe our emotions. We sort of want to show our physical emotions, but we use these characters to literally define how we're feeling in a moment. If we look back in history, you know, let's have to through history and everything, right? If we look back in history, communication was something people cherished. Communication was something that was difficult to take place back in, in something as simple as a hundred years ago. Even our parents, communication was difficult for them because, I mean, they have... Imagine how hard the phone. What is that with a big long cord attached to it? And then they have to they have to wait for that one moment where we're so phone because if you can't put one person on the phone is eight time. That's just what 15, 16 years ago. I don't want to show the age of your parents out there, but you know. And then before that, people had to what? They had to write letters. You have to take your time and to uh, inscribe and write how you felt about somebody who was thousands of miles away. Not even thousands, probably just down the road. And you had to write a letter to them. And you didn't even know when that letter would get to them. You didn't know if that letter would get to them. And guess what? Your response might even come till a week later. And guess what? We're doing that right now <laughs> on our phones. Even people haven't seen until a week later. 
we so big and famous and so popular that I don't know, I can't respond to you right now. But we have the ability to communicate, but we don't desire communication. We don't desire communication with one another. And you see, the thing about it is that this whole pandemic has experience has brought us in a place where communication was kind of forced on us because you couldn't actually physically meet somebody. For those in school or those in work, that you had to get on uh, social media platforms, you had to get on uh, on Zoom or Skype or whatever you know meeting platform that was to actually speak to people. And many of us, we never put on our cameras, we never unmute our mics. So even in that, we don't want to communicate with one another. And here's the thing about it, that each region, each person, each, uh, each, each, each country really, the, the society is brought up in different ways, right? The culture is different. So I'm sure that's culture, we are not accustomed to because of our schooling system, we're not accustomed to public speaking, yeah? we're not accustomed to even getting up in front of two, three, four, five people to talk. So our our skills in communicating is not as uh, what's we looking for? <laughs> not as yeah, that's, not as advanced as let's say it would be in Canada or America. Because we know, especially in America right now, they like to communicate. Okay? Trust me, they communicate their feelings on Twitter and Facebook and any platform, TikTok, Snapchat. And um, yeah, they, 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 had their, they, they vented their feelings through social media. But the thing about it is that it's not that we cringe when we have to communicate with one another. Because we also have our clans, we also have our cliques and our groups that no matter what we message those people here, no matter what, we have every other group chat muted for a year. Yeah. But that group chat, what blazing 200 messages by the time you're off for five minutes. But then what is the content? What are we saying in those group chats? What is being said in those group chats? And we stay quiet, but we're reading all the messages. What is being said? Are we being examples and ambassadors for Christ, even in something as a chat forum? We have become so reclusive in a society where, in society itself, it expects us to show off our true self to show off because we see that in the world right now they say no i want to you know i want to show myself and, and be myself and be yourself and show who you really are and that's what people would love and expect and but then in that society is creating a form of fashion uh a kind of blueprint for how you should supposed to act and how normal is supposed to be So then the thing about it is that the only way you can actually communicate is if you pick up a phone. The only way you can communicate is if you post a status on, uh, on Instagram. Th yeah, that's my form of communication. Because when I post that, I know people are going to respond. In the DMs. That's, a, that's how society is. Right? When we post questions on our social media for people to respond. It's happening. It's so real. It's so real. It's so real. It's Deuteronomy 6. And we're going to read a bit of Deuteronomy 6 because that's our main scripture. That's our foundation scripture for today. Those of you who are watching, Deuteronomy chapter 6. And it's, it, was, it was really a hard piercing scripture for me. Uh, we're we're going to skim through some voices and 
come back and do a U-turn and all kind of things we're gonna do in Deuteronomy 6. Right? So we're gonna read from verse 10. We're gonna read from verse 10. I mean we're gonna we're gonna go back to verse 1 through 9. But I want to start from verse 10 because it's within between 10 and about 16 that is really the, the main point of what we have to say today. So it says, The Lord your God is the wrong scripture. Six. So, right, so from 10 it says, So it shall be when the Lord your God brings you into the land of which he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give you large and beautiful cities, which Guess what? Here's it. I hear this part in scripture. In large cities which you did not build. Houses full of good things. Which you did not fill. Hewn. What is hewn? Hewn out of wells. What is hewn? What is hewn? Anybody know what hewn means? My God. The guy you communicate here. <laughs> hewn out of wells which you did not dig. Vineyards and olive trees which you did not paint. When you have eaten and are full, then beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and shall take oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the peoples who are all around you. And here is verse 15. For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you. I'm going to stop right there for the moment. For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you. So the question that I have, so the title of the message is, Are we leaving Jesus on sea? Are we leaving God on sea? Our God is a, what does the scripture say? He is a jealous God. He is a jealous God. And you see what God, jeez, what God has to do to us or open doors and open avenues or find a way to try to communicate to us in this season. Because God is speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking and guess what? We're not even responding or acknowledging that He has spoken to us. 2020 is a perfect example of God is speaking. I mean, it's so evident. Living in a pandemic, could we, in our imagination, even believe that it's such a hygienic society, such a, for lack of a better word, the most serious, a gentrified society. They're so clean, they're so clean, they're so clean. And there's a pandemic that has been created. So therefore, Here's what I want. The physical meeting of people and friends and family had to stop. So there was that drawing back of communication. So the communication had to happen through what technology? Hmm. Prophetic people will already begin to understand where God is taking us. He is a jealous God. You see, what to use positive forms like he's done in the Bible many times when the children of Israel didn't want to hear God because there were several times in the Bible where they switched off, right? It's like, okay, God. Mm -mm. Uh, too much commandments, you know. God, we could only obey like two or three of those. So we're going to, one. We're going to switch off everything else you said. We're going to cut out one piece of scripture from the Bible we're going to cut out one piece of scripture from the Bible and just let's put the rest of the Bible at the side for now. 
I mean, we kind of see that happening with the words. Are we seeing this happening? Are we aware or are we just oblivious? I hope we're not. So God had to speak to his servants in several ways. Anybody knows a way, an unusual way God had to speak? How did God speak in his way, in an unusual way? He spoke, you know. There we go. That's it. I was looking for that one. I'm going to take a look. He spoke through that burning bush. Can you imagine Moses at that time? My boy showed her around with his, his uh, walking stick and pulling a boat. You know, two children riding that boat, walking back home. And then he see this bush on fire, but like there's nothing else on fire around. And a voice comes out of that. How would we react to that? That would have been a good people. We have a youth fires, a series coming up called What Would You Do? <laughs> and that would have been a good example of what. What would you do if God spoke to you through a burning bush? I would have uh, taken my phone <laughs> and recorded it. God spoke what? Through a donkey? You remember? You remember that? He spoke through a donkey. When the prophets didn't want to listen to God, he spoke through a donkey. Now that's even, for me, even more like amazing. God went all Dr. Doolittle and everybody. Can you imagine that? He used unusual channels, unusual methods of speaking to God's children. You know, as an evidence of God speaking, when, and, and Moses, it's just, everything that happened during his time in Trinidad was just so amazing. God parting that Red Sea is him speaking. God sending those, a lot of those templates that happened to the Egyptians is him speaking. My God. You know what's another thing that happened? There was a disregard, and there is even right now a disregard for the prophets. There's a disregard and a dishonor for pastors and apostles and everybody in the fivefold ministry. Because throughout this pandemic, let's be honest, there's a kind of glut on social media for the word of God. What do we really listen to? And there's, there's such a glut that what happens is that for us, to our ears, there's now like a diluting of the word. There's like a watering down because we will skip through one and hear two, two minutes and then go to another and hear another two minutes. And, and then we, we kind of lost. Well, where's our vision? Where's our understanding of his word? And then situations in our lives. That's another avenue through which God speaks. Things that happen to us. This pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> this pandemic. If there was ever a time when God was like, all right, Church of Jesus Christ, come together. Boom, pandemic. How was the church? Look around. Your churches in Trinidad Tobago have reopened. How many people are actually coming to God? You know, it's 50%. So... Is the fifty percent capacity filled? No. Are you seeing those people that you saw all those months ago when church was reopened, and any months prior that when church was open? Situation, circumstances, and God is placing all these things in place and speaking through different avenues to just say. I am a jealous God. I want you. I don't want anything else around. I just want you. I want the church of Jesus Christ is what? His bride. He loves us so much. He wants us more than anything. He is a jealous God. Deuteronomy 6.15 The Lord your God is a jealous God among you. So let's get in. Let's get in. Let's get Let's break it down. What is jealous? Jealous in Hebrew is kano. Q 
A L A W R it means demanding. He is a demanding God. He demands our time. He demands our intimacy. It means exclusive service. It means to be zealous. God longs for his children. We are spiritual Israel. He desires that intimacy to be so close to us. We can hear his very heart, but he could speak in that still small voice. Because guess what? You feel God has created this situation. He created these circumstances and situations. All the noise and all the, all the confusion we see out there so that we can go and meet him in that holy of holies. So you can go and meet him in that intimate place away from all the noise and the confusion. So he's like, oh yes, this is where I want to be. This is where I'm going to speak and use and, and, and desire for you to be used in this season. Because that's the thing about us as well, you know. The reason we don't respond to messages is that we don't want to react to what those people are sending us. We don't want to respond to what they are sending because guess what? It could be somebody asking us to do something for them. It's like, no, nah, I don't have time for that. I'm not going to respond. So they will know another will. But you're not doing one squat because you're quarantine home. Where are you going? You have nowhere to go. Zero places. Prime Minister just opened to the back of us to go back to the restaurant. So 30% capacity. Beaches just reopened. How many times are you ready to go to the beach? How many times before the pandemic you ever go to the beach? All of a sudden you want to go to the beach. <laughs> and the word among, you see at the end of that scripture, it said among you. So among is kereb, and that's Q-E-R-E-B. And that means inward parts, in the midst, at the center. Deeper, it means thoughts, emotions, your gut, your soul. So God is saying that he is jealous among us. He's jealous because he wants to spend time with us. He wants to be the center of our lives. We can't let the pandemic be the center of our lives. We can't let our family be the center of our lives. We can't let our circumstances, our significant other. Guess what? Who? Guess, guess. Guess. <laughs> News for you people. God is the center. And everything else can ripple and be connected to that. I just say this song I'm thinking of, but... Uh, I don't want to sing it because copyright. That's the excuse we're going to use it. But you know your song? Jesus is the what? Set of the Lord. Karab. So there's Kereb, which is among, but then the root of Kereb is Karab. So you just replace it to the easier to years, right? Okay. And it means to come near. Draw near for a purpose. Ha. So it's not that we just go in and pick it up and I say, yeah, yeah, all right, we're going to get into it, Lord. But no, if you go with that mindset, that mental, who is that? No, we don't go with that car, don't take it. But it is to draw near to the Lord. It is to draw near for a purpose. Because he, that's what he wants to reveal things about our lives to us. He wants to reveal things about our families, about our situations, about the pandemic, about our future and our jobs, our schools, whatever. We want answers now about our health, our situations. Where do you think the answer is coming from? Where do we think the answer is coming from? Are we ready to... Realign and recenter our focus that make sure God is the center. Are we willing to do that? Are we just going to leave God unseen? 
sending so many messages. Mm -hmm. Like, the check was like, bro, got those. Um, Do we want it to get to a place? Because guess what? God is speaking now. That is, that is a fact. That is a fact. But the thing about it is, is that, are we going to wait for it to be a period like the intertestamental period between Malachi and Matthew where God didn't speak for 400 years? Could we imagine that? Look how advanced technology has gotten with them communicating within a hundred years. Imagine God not speaking for four hundred years. You think the world seems in natural and chaos now? Imagine those silent years where God didn't speak. This, but just a side note, there's always a remnant. There's always a remnant. We don't want that. So we have to take that jealousy. We have to be in a place where like, you know, we're so proud that we are so loved that God, the creator of the heavens and the earth is jealous for each and every one of us here individually. Because hmm. we have to understand, all right, we think this world, and we see this world now, and we say, wow, this world is confusing and mad and chaos and elections and lies and wars and rumors of wars and pandemics and epidemics and all kind of other epidemics. But in that, <laughs> you're. There are plenty of academics, you're right. Plenty of people who feel they know what they say and they know it's caught. The people who are watching, you're not those people. Eh? It's people who are not watching. And the people who are not here. The Jewish people during it in this intertestamental period, at the beginning and throughout, they were mistreated. Their significant others, their wives were severely mistreated. They were marrying pagans, which was a no-no back in that time. They were not tithing. <laughs> you didn't want to cough inside of the coronavirus, but cough, cough. They were not tithing. The priests themselves were neglecting the temple. Oh my gosh. Imagine the priests not taking care. Imagine the pastors or whatever church you go to not neglecting the house of the Lord. Yeah. And then guess what? They were also not teaching the ways of God. So then, so then what are you doing? If they're not taking care of the house and they Motivational speaking for 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 who? Anyway, I just God loves everybody. What is <laughs> that? There were plenty of people who were not and God's people were not honoring Him. Now we want to throw and cast <coughs> aspersions to all of those out people out there in the world who not see not believe us. But this God speaking. To the church, you know, not honoring him. Mm. And the thing about it is that because we are not tuned in to the frequency of heaven where God is speaking, we believe he's silent. We believe, oh, God not speaking. I, God didn't say anything to me. So if God didn't say anything to me, I don't believe God didn't say anything to nobody else. Because there are people out there who believe God spoke already and He's not speaking again. Wow. There are people out there who believe all the miracles happen in the Bible and it can't happen again. Good for those people. Your faith needs to be built up. You need to have faith. God is speaking. He is moving. And we have to be in that place where... Holiness 
purity, righteousness is who we are. We are ambassadors. We are prophetic ambassadors because we're, we are not just ambassadors for uh, where we are, our sphere, our sphere of influence, but being an ambassador, you're only for at, at, at that place for a time period because guess what? You have a next assignment somewhere else. But our assignments are to go where? Uncharted territory. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, come on, that's all right. Right? You know, you're just pressing love. Like, you know, you know, you know, you know you're sports and activity. All, all the sports now, nowadays, you know, they have this soundtrack in the back. And they score a goal, they miss a goal, crowd noise, that kind of thing. Because the communication right now. It's like, it was like, it's like, yeah, yeah. Anybody knows what squash is? It's like tennis, but it's, it's against the wall with yourself, you know? So, that's all it is sometimes, but just cool. Just cool. Another scripture I just want to go to is this, which parallels you from, he's 615, is, uh, let's see if I remember it. Exodus 34, 14. Exodus 34, 14. And it also speaks about God being a jealous God. Because he didn't just say it once in the Bible. That's the thing about it. It's like, oh, but why BJ God? He said that once. He's a jealous God, but he didn't really say it that many times. So is he really jealous? Where does he say it? 14. For you shall worship no other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous, is a Jealous God. Wow, what do you look at that? His name is Jealous. And we want to take that negatively because I'm hearing people say that in their minds. But is it Jealous? Does that mean something negative? This is absolutely preposterous. Preposterous, something you say. It is jealous. It's a good thing. But guess what? That was sovereign God who created all these words. He confused with words representing my Lord. And he is, he is named a je jealous. He is a jealous God. All the idols we have before him in our hearts now, all the false gods we have, he say, I am jealous because guess what? You desire that more than you desire me. You desire social media, you desire communicating with your creeks rather than opening my message that I sent you. And you see, <laughs> you think about it as a message right there. You know. When what about messaging have you on? The group chat, you have it pinned to the top, huh? The click group chat, the pinned to the top. You fire somewhere down at the end. And then Right next to that group chat is God. And he's like, hello. He sent a little gifts. He even sent emojis. He tried, she tried, she just trying to get our attention. He sent a voice call, he sent a video call, and we just not we didn't have enough one time. And you see why? Must we then obey what God is saying here? Why must we do that? Why must we put down these idols? And why must we put down all these false gods we put before Him? That's the question. So we're going back to Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to read from verse 2. Uh, to 9, yeah. So it says, Deuteronomy 6, 2 to 9, that's where we are, that you may what? Fear the Lord your God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, you and your son and your grandson, all the days of your life, that your days may be prolonged. And I can just stop right here, we can all go home. Why? Must we obey our jealous God? Because we fear Him. 
We fear his holiness. We fear his righteousness. That we can't even think or fathom for one split second to not respond to that message he sends us. We have a specific ringtone for where God sent a message. The ringtone says, hello, this is God, answer, boop, answer immediately, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Are we like that? Hmm. Because we fear him because of these commandments and these statutes that he's given to us so that our days may be prolonged. And if these things are not to make us worse off and to, and to make us behold our head down in shame and uh, in condemnation, but it is to lift us up, to raise us up, because God holds us to a higher standard. We sell ourselves short. God can speak to me. You're sure, right? And it goes on to say, Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you. A land flowing with milk and honey. So the thing about it is that when we are obedient, we are blessed. When we are obedient, we prosper. When we are disobedient, things get a little, take a little while. Because guess what? We have to go back around that mountain again. We like to go around the mountain. You know? I realize that. You all like to go around that mountain over and over. Do you all like to go around that mountain? Or do we like to go straight to the point? Yeah, let's go straight to that land with milk and honey. Or we like to go to the What will happen? So then it goes on to say, and these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them. Oh, and here's it. Oh, we think that when God speaks to us, is to keep it to ourselves. We think that God, when God messages us, when he sends that 25-minute voice note, when he sends that 9-minute voice note, when he sends that 55-second Inspirational video. Sorry, I don't know why my tone changed there. I apologize. <laughs> it is for us to take in, for us to assimilate and digest, digress. And then, what does it say? You shall teach them diligently to your children and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and yeah, the Bible is getting so, in the scripture, it's so like straightforward. This is exactly what you are supposed to do. When you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. So literally, as you walk, as you breathe, as you have your being, you obey the commands of God and you express it. To those below you. You express it to those amongst you. They just stop there. No? Scripture goes on to say, You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. It's like literally, it's here. It's here. You get cookie eye when you look at it. It's so in front of you. That's it. God is showing his word, his commandment, supposed to be here, right here. So when we look to go and do something stupid, it's brought up. It's like, it's like you know when you watch those uh, long time 1920s and 30s cartoons, Tom and Jerry and whatnot, and Jerry, his mouse, right? He will put this um, rake or something um, around a corner, and then Tom will come, and then he'll get. That's it. God is literally putting things there for us to say, "Stop! Don't go any further." We're still chasing after the wrong things. Hmm. Hmm. That's why I make it look relatable. You ever watch Tom and Jerry? You know that's just 
Obvious. I don't know who he, I don't know who he YouTube stars no, or the TikTok stars or I don't know, so I can't. Me, okay. Right, and it goes on to say, you shall what? Write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So guess what? You feel representing Jesus and having Jesus as that example for you and your ways and how you walk and live. That is just to keep all inside here. And your friend in school, your colleague in work, do you even know you are Christian? No. It can't work. And it's not that, no, I don't want to, um, I don't want to force my beliefs on them. <laughs> but they force it every day. Hey. Everything that hey. is not of God going on around you and everything oh, you do. Come on, people. We got to be different. We got to be set apart. Yep. Anyway, set apart. Watch that on YouTube. Yep. Be fast. Great interview. Great testimony. Right, and it goes, I don't know, that's a very time. But what I wanted to say about is that we need to put it on our, on the, on the, what is this? You shall write on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Guess what? Before anybody can come in your house, why well, you have your gate? This is, from henceforth, is Jesus. Yes. <laughs> and then, just in case they forget when they reach your front door, yes. Jesus again, blood. Guess what? You're sanitizing your hands and the, don't take any natural. It's sanitizing your hands with the blood of Jesus before you walk in my house. That is where we have to get to. Because guess what? We're going to 17 now of Deuteronomy 6. Here is why we do these things. Because it says you shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God. His testimonies and his statutes which he has commanded you. You shall do what is right and good in our sight. In our sight, in society's sight, on what they say on social media sight, on what the inspirational speaker said sight. In the sight of the Lord, that what? It may be well with you and that you may go in and possess the good land which the Lord swore to your fathers to cast out your enemies from before you as the Lord has spoken. That was what he was supposed to put on. Yay! Sorry, the uh, tech guys, I've seen any bad day, you know, because I feel the presence of the Lord is so heavy right now that saints of God inside here can't even raise their hands. <laughs> The weight of the Lord is so evident. I barely stand there. Which is very true. But that's the size of it. The whole point of, of, of being ambassadors for Christ, of, of being the ones who will be those first responders. Ah, thank you, Lord. That we will be those first responders. We are the first ones that when everybody is running away from the fire, when everybody is running away from that tornado, we are the ones, the first responders heading to. Because guess what? They are the blind ones, they are the deaf ones, they are the dumb ones, they are the sick ones, they are the lame ones who can't escape that fire, who can't escape that tornado, who can't escape that flood. And who is going to be there to rescue them? I know I will be. We have to be willing to be that generation that is set apart, that generation, that remnant, who's willing to stand up that when a crowd is going one way, I'm walking in the opposite direction. Because I know that's the direction God is moving in. You feel God moves where the majority of people go? I'm seriously asking, do you think God moves in the majority? But you see, the thing about it is that there's peer pressure, there's, there's cyberbullying, there's, there's social media, and there's a standard on social media, and we think that we must, that is the standard that we live up to, live up to, 
And that standard is only way down here, but but no, we have to rise above that. That is where the the, the communion and the fellowship with people who are Christ like and Christ man they comes into play. So therefore we strengthen one another, we build up one another, we build up one another. And that is where we have to be as first responders. That that a close-knit unit. Because guess what? As that unit, because we're so, when we become that unit, we're so synchronized with Christ. We hear the heartbeat of God. Our hearts are synchronized with His will and His purpose that when we go out to do things, we don't have to look left or look right to see if that person is there or that person is doing their job. No. That's understood. It's secondary. When we go out into the world, as many of us are called, in fact, everybody here is called to do, go out and preach the gospel, is that we understand that, yes, I am going with this person on my side, that person on my side, Jesus all around, all them host of angels assisting me, and I'm just going by faith. Because that's why I'm inside. That faith is built up inside of me. Because guess what? When God spoke, in that dry season, when we responded to that message in that dry season, when God says, in this dry season, so, when he said in this dry season, I want you to get deeper and intimate with me. I want you to do a week of prayer and fasting. When God says to do something, we just, let's just obey. This generation, we just have to do it in the wrong way. We have to do the opposite to what authorities say. We just, I don't know, we're born with that kind of rebellious nature. And we just have to be different, just be obedient. It's like, nah, it's not like you know, we don't follow the systems of this world, and we don't follow government authority and Babylon and all that nonsense. We have to be, this generation, willing to be first responders, this generation willing to be set apart, this generation willing to be of pure heart. A militant generation for the things of God. We, we become so lethargic and so passive when it comes to things of God and when it comes to when People say things against God and we stay quiet. You know, you know that is very detrimental because our jealous God, the God we're supposed to fear, would be like, whoa, well, if this son or this daughter is not even standing up for me in this small situation, can I use them for the young? But even right now, God. Is, on this, is such a loving God, he's an understanding God, that he will keep sending those messages. He will keep using those alternative ways of communicating things to us. He will speak through that burning bush, he will speak through that donkey, he will speak through that movie, he will speak through that friend, who's not saved, but somehow happened to say something that stabbed you in your heart, to be like, wow, God, really? Because he wants to convict our hearts, so, because guess what, he chases who he loves. He's doing this for growth and maturity and progression and ascension in his ways. And he's saying, have you not forgotten I brought you out of Egypt? You want to go back to Egypt? You want to go back to enslavement? He's bringing you in a place where he provides for you every step of the way to take you into a land of milk and honey. So hold up, wait, wait, wait a bit, wait a bit. It's going to happen. But it's for us to get in that intimate place where 
as he's speaking, as he continues to obey his commandments, his statutes, when he does bless our socks off, that we're in that position to receive. Yes, I am wearing socks. So you will bless my socks. I am that person. I just, I desire to live that life of faith because I can't stand here. I cannot stand here and talk about faith and talk about responding and listening to God if I myself am not doing it. I'm not living such a life. Because, no, honestly, I was partially kind of still that person. Where when somebody sends a message, you don't respond. And here's the thing about it. I know this. I know it was Prophet Shah when he said this. Delayed obedience is disobedience. So if we, if we see that message and we take Two minutes, five minutes to respond. Still disobedient. God spoke to us in a moment. You can see God speaks to us still. He wants us to see our reaction time. Rap now, rap now, do this now. Move now, move now, move now, change now. Because guess what? It's going to bring healing. It's going to bring deliverance. It's going to bring knowledge and understanding and growth to our lives spiritually. So let's respond. Let's change our settings, our way that we react to our message that God sent. And guess what? From this message, God is then going to test us in the practical. When somebody sends a message now, how are we going to respond? And because, you see, the thing about it is that it's a probably it's a, a simple thing as obedience, you know. You don't have to go and write no epistle after somebody sends a message and that person waiting for your response and five minutes later you still see him typing. Say, what did you? Oh yes you do. Here's a here's a thing that people do is that they will click on the section where you're supposed to type the message, you would put one letter. And you would leave that for a while to make it look like you would come with this cold philosophical answer. And then you just respond with K. Yeah, it happens. But God is good. He's understanding and He's loving. So even right now, we thank God for the ability to communicate. We thank God. That he is spirit, so that we can have that spirit to spirit communication. That when our flesh fails us, that we can still have that opportunity to rise up and overcome because our spirit man is going to literally toughen up and say, Hey, listen, wake up, wake up, wake up. Now is the time. God is speaking and he's moving. So, Father, even right now, we thank you for this, this word. We thank you for the ability, oh God to affect change. We thank you for the ability to uh, have that communication and that intimacy and that love that you desire us to be. That Lord Father, even right now, we cast away all our idols. We okay. We really hope that you just enjoyed that video. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and of course, to share it with your friends.